Yeah. Hello, New Orleans. You're listening to The Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host, Big Q and the Guys. Welcome back to The Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guy. In this segment, we got through with our football talk. Now we're going to hit you with our boxing talk. And this is for all of our boxing fans out there that have been waiting for this recap. Now, of course, this past weekend, D.C., we watched the much-anticipated bout of Anthony Joshua, the three-belt champion, going against the one-belt champion. That was a bout? I thought that was a bout. <laughs> Joseph Parker. Of course, both guys undefeated at the time. Uh, uh, but Joshua is 20 and 0 with 20 knockouts. Parker is 24. Uh, wins 18 knockouts. So both undefeated champions collide in the ring for the first time. This is the first time in a while we've seen two heavyweights undefeated champions with belts fighting each other. It's been a while since that happened. But anyway, uh, DC, we watched it. 12 rounds. It went to decision, a unanimous decision for Anthony Joshua, AJ1. Uh, me personally, I hold my comment, my uh, <laughs> my comments to after this. But what would you? We watched the fight, man. What was your thoughts on this fight, uh, AJ and, and Joe Parker, man? What was your thinking on it? <laughs> Are you, is your nose stopped up? No, nah, I was snoring. Oh, that's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell you was doing. Okay, we uh, went to sleep. It was on, a snooze fest, saying. man. Uh, it was a it was a technical fight. Uh, Parker, in the beginning, I thought he stood a shot. He was scoring a lot of a lot of points, uh, getting a lot of love taps. I didn't really see anything connecting. Um, Andy Joshua, every blue moon. When I say every blue moon, I mean like once every three or four rounds, he would get a real good shot on Parker. But it was a lot of I guess disappointment because of the expectations. Um, you see Dante Wilder. Fight and you just think of the old time boxers, you start getting excited. Uh, Andy Joshua was gonna fight. Oh, okay, so you, you remember when boxers used to show each other up like they they oh, I fought this guy, I knocked him out in the seventh round, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's street cred and, and talking trash. So you're looking to see uh, Andy Joshua and Parker try to put on an epic fight because the Dante Wilder fight was. A very good fight, uh, a fight that I was mad I didn't record, so I could go back and watch it again. Uh, but watching a fight like this, I was just kind of glad when it was over. I was like, oh, okay, Andy Joshua won. Like I thought, okay, so what's next? <laughs> well, uh, the yeah. undercard was actually more entertaining right. than the actual fight, which is yes. pretty sad. I mean, um, it's a main event. They had 80,000 pe- people in the arena, and... Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but everybody talks about Mayweather fights and how he didn't do anything. I found uh, Mayweather fights to be more entertaining, entertaining than this one. Yeah, well, you know what? You're absolutely right. Um, this fight, well, I wouldn't call it a snooze fest, but it was one of those fights where uh, everything... It was, that, it was, a, a, everything be, it was that, technical. Let right, me be, right. It, right. It, it, was, it, it was boxing. I would say it was more technical than anything technical. because Joseph Parker wasn't a... A uh, stationary fighter, like right. most fighters that stand he didn't in front make of it AJ. Easy for Joshua. Right, he, he most fighters stand in front of AJ, and AJ just picks him apart. How he knocked Dylan White all around, and all these other be- people that he beat. I think uh, uh, Joe Parker knew that he wasn't if he was going to stand in front of AJ, that he could not be a whooping post for AJ because he knew he wouldn't be able to ha- take all of those. Uh, punches that AJ hit him with. Now, of course, it, a bit of sour grapes for Joe Parker because at the end of the fight, they asked about the punching power of of Andy, jo- of Andy Joshua, and he said, "Well, no, I've been hit harder by uh, Andy Ruiz." Not, not, I was that's hit, what he said. That's what he said. The guy with the belly. The Andy Ruiz hit him harder than uh, than Joshua did. I don't think Joshua uh, really connected on one of his patented shots. Like I saw a point in the fight. Well, uh, the the referee, man, I don't know what the hell was wrong. That's with that guy. that's the next segment he of kept my commentary. Stepping was in and, and messing stuff up, like we would get the fight going into a direction where, you know, uh, a, a fan or, or, or us watching the fight would want it to go. Where it's getting entertaining, they're starting to trade shots, and the referee would step in and break them up randomly for no reason. But anyway, my whole point was, there was a time when they kind of got clinched up, and I mean, it wasn't even 
holding each other for a good two and a half seconds, and the referee steps in, and uh, he almost got uh, Joseph Parker killed because Andy Joshua threw his patented uppercut, and he just missed him by like maybe an inch. Yeah, and he skinned yeah. him on side the face and kind of winked his eye. At that point, I was like, "Oh, oh, oh we about to see something!" Oh, <laughs> no, and nothing happened after that. Well, but yeah, um, yeah. he never really connected and got him with one of them shots that we seen him land on everybody else. So I guess maybe uh Joseph Parker can feel that way because he ain't really fully connect. So I don't know about the guy with the belly though, man. I think he could have picked another <laughs> reference. <laughs> well it might have been an insult to him to say that a guy with a pop belly can drill me uh, hit me it punched I know, me but I can't even can, take so. that I can't take that serious man. And then well, he, Andy Ruiz then he was came a champion out, he now he took the out, belt from him. He came out uh, bumping Roy Jones. Uh, I can't be stopped. Can't be more. I knew he was going to lose the fight as <laughs> soon as I heard that theme song. Hey, but listen, let, let me put it to you like this, though, DC. you absolutely right about uh, when you when you was talking about the, uh, the fact that it was a very technical fight. Now, of course, uh, whatever went wrong, could go wrong, went wrong with this fight. Of course, Andy Joshua, three times that I counted that he had to Retap, retape the tape that was coming apart on his glove. The referee's uh, ineffective ability to referee the fight was an issue. And then you had the elusiveness, if I want to call it that, of Joe Parker, who was dipping and dodging and, uh, you know, double jabbing, but not really actually hitting uh, AJ, just trying to keep him away so maybe he could set up a punch for himself. Now, we've seen a few uh, punches on uh, punches that were landed. But I definitely don't want to see this fight again. I don't want to see no. Anthony Parker or Joshua uh, again. You know, it was one of those fights. Uh, anytime you get a fight on the undercard, a heavyweight bout on the other card, that was everything that you thought this fight, the main event was supposed to be, you most certainly do not want to see this fight again. I so, think the, the most disappointing thing was, like, if you didn't know any better, you would have never thought that this was a championship fight where both people basically had both people basically had belts on the line you know you would have never thought that by looking at the intensity of it i'm not saying they didn't want it but it just was no fire to me man and that's really what i was expecting when you have the number one fighter and then the number uh what number three fighter was joseph parker right i think it was number uh, maybe two or three one of the two but depending you, but on you, you said it man where you have uh ortiz at Right, but but you said it, man, and you've been saying it all along, like, you know, and everybody says this cliche quote, styles make fights. Styles so, make fights, yes. I mean, maybe it's just one of those situations where uh, the styles that these two guys have uh, just didn't mesh well. I mean, it was almost like watching two middleweight fighters as opposed to two heavyweights. I'm used to seeing heavyweight guys, everybody don't hit the mat, but, you know, somebody going to get hit like they got hit with a truck. And I, I didn't really see that. No, no and definite you know, was, punches. Uh, you seen a, a few stickers, but not yeah, he nothing. he got a few, a few little shots, but right, yeah. I seen Andy Joshua hit Parker, and he, he hit him, and it's kind of clean, but Parker just keeps walking into it and throwing combos and being active. I'm like, what the hell is this? Right, so. <laughs> but with that said, now we know uh, Andy Joshua did. He was talking a little smack after the fight about Deontay Wilder. And uh, let's 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 kind of look ahead uh, uh, for the remaining of this segment. We've got a little less than four minutes remaining. Let's look ahead. Who does a Anthony Joshua, of course, Deontay Wilder, uh, 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 wants to fight. He wants to make it happen. They're, they're the only two guys with any belts that count. Uh, of course, Dylan White won the platinum belt, whatever the hell that is. But the main fights, uh, the belts, AJ has all four of the heavyweight belts, uh, four of the five main heavyweight titles. Uh, Deontay has the one, the, his belt here in America, and uh, Anthony Joshua is posting high saying, if you want, you know, I'm going to fight here in Europe or we could fight in Cardiff. If you want to fight in Cardiff, we'll fight in London. Don't really care too much, even though his promoter, Eddie Hearn, is saying that sooner or later we're going to come to America to fight. And I've heard Jarrell Miller, uh, Big Baby Miller is another guy they're looking at potentially fighting. Uh, based on what you've been researching, who's the next fight for Anthony Joshua? Is it Deontay Wilder or somebody else? It's definitely going to be somebody else. <laughs> um, I would love for it to be Deontay Wilder, but as we know, doesn't Deontay Wilder have a title defense that's mandatory? Well, I think unification trumps uh, mandatories. So okay. if they gonna, if they set up the the mandatory uh, the uh, the unification bout, everything else is off if they're going to do that. So 
Nobody else wants to see anybody else fight anybody else except for the belts fight the belts. Bottom line. What's your take? That's true. And uh, I definitely want to see that fight. I think anybody who's a boxing fan wants to see the Deontay Wilder and the Joshua fight like before Parker. <laughs> like, yes. you know, they want him yeah. bumped out the way. But um, Deontay Wilder is going around saying Andy Joshua's ducking him, <laughs> you know. And uh, Andy Joshua is verbally saying that he wants to fight Wilder. So, I think it's just a matter of time before it happens. Maybe uh, the team of Andy Joshua, I think they go find uh, one of the one of those guys where he, you know he can make him look impressive again because this wasn't really an impressive victory for him. Uh, he had all knockouts on all his victories up to this point, and he actually won this one on the decision. And I guess as a true boxer, you actually want to win on a decision too to show people you can go twelve rounds and actually fight technically and sound and still get the victory and that's actually a lot of times what you have to do in a championship bout because you're going to face a competitor that's worthy and that you have to take seriously because if you make the wrong mistake going for the knockout I mean you could lose everything that you've ever worked for so I definitely get it why this fight wasn't I guess entertaining as you would like it to be so I see them finding an opponent of lesser caliber but still kind of maybe in the top 10 for Andy Joshua to, to to go up against. Let me pose this question because we did get a few questions uh, via Twitter. And one of the questions that uh, one of the people submitted to us was, is Anthony Joshua scared of Deontay Wilder? Let's answer that one right now before the break. I'm going to say yes, but not in the way that most people would think. I think uh, Andy Joshua is scared of every fighter that he comes across because he goes out admitting it himself he's afraid to lose. So if he's afraid to lose, that means any opponent that he encounters, he has some some level of fear of fighting them because he doesn't want to lose, which can ultimately be a good thing if you know how to channel that and you don't let it overtake you or overcome uh, your mind. Okay, well, that was interesting as well, DC. When we come back on the other side of the break, that'll do it pretty much for this fight. When we come back on the other side of the break, we'll talk some more boxing news. We'll speak about uh, what's next for uh, Deontay Wilder. We'll also cover uh, Alexander Povatkin's win over uh, David Price. We also have some news on Triple G uh, that we'd like to share and his intentions to fight on May 5th, regardless of who he's fighting. We'll talk to you about that. And more Deontay Wilder news is he's been investigated by the Boxing Commission for comments that he made about one a body on his record during one of the morning shows. So we'll cover all of that on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Sports Coma. We'll pick you and the guys. Stay with us. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. 